Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth. Brandon. When did you get back? Last week. Off of sleep. Last Sunday. Freshly back. All right. Uh, good morning, guys. It's uh, good morning. always a privilege to be here, sitting there. It's even a great honor to be here standing um, with some that will come from, uh, hopefully from the Lord, and will uh, build us up as a community, as a church. Uh, this is the title of uh, my, uh, oh, I don't know how to call it, probably a reflection on uh, the Word of God. And it's actually something that kind of tormented me for a very long time. Uh, well, Rachel knows me for good, and uh, I'm more a person that is more dedicated to duty when it comes to what pushes me to do things. So, and I, do, and I try, oh, and I try, I always uh, uh, slip to the perfection, perfectionist side of it, and the joy is dropped from that. So if you do stuff only to result like a good person, like a good citizen, like a good husband, like a good father, I'm going to do my duty, I'm just uh, going to execute the orders, and that's going to be enough of me. And it never was. So this uh, uh, question, does God care about our happiness, was in, in the back of my head always, like a whisper. Where is the joy? Where is the happiness? And uh, so I reflected on uh, that uh, uh, question, and I went to the best place ever, which is upstairs. <laughs> and uh, he revealed me quite a bit of uh, stuff that I need to work on, and uh, it's going to build me up, and hopefully it's going to be useful to all of us. Uh, the source that I used mainly is the is Word, of course, and uh, one of the main, uh, the other res outside resources will be uh, John Piper. Uh, he wrote two, two of the main books that I can think of is Desiring God, and another one, which is kind of uh, ironical to me, is When I Don't Desire God. So he goes and give you both places, he's going to reach you wherever you are. So, and I'm going to use uh, those, the slides uh, as a, almost a, a read-along thing. So it's not going to be just one compact idea. I'm going to mature in, towards that in the future, maybe. But for now, I need to go with you step by step. So uh, we, that's where we left the last time with Brian taught. So I want to have a little recap so we can move from that. It was kind of a amazing how those two things are strictly connected to each other. And when, while you were preaching that day, I said, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. So, uh, that's where we left. The cross of Jesus as open door. So, he was teaching about uh, Romans 6.14. And those are the bullet points that I kind of uh, used to sum up what uh, it was taught. We come to Jesus while we're enemies and sinners to him. And he's got these open doors for us. While we are that. When uh, we are in that position. We are saved in Jesus. Baptized in his death. We are transformed in Jesus. On a walk in a newest of life. And uh, uh, you remember the pickle story, which I love, by the way. It just, it can reach anybody. Amen. So we permanently changed and permeated with Christ and new creation. So we are free from sin. We are dead to sin and alive in the spirit. When it's dead to sin, somebody can think in his head, no, I'm, I don't feel really dead to sin because I sin. But this is, is, death is more something that wiped out your records. You are in his plan, in his kingdom. You are children of his. So that's what is, and he's transforming a new creation. Now you are actually enabled to choose to be an instrument of righteousness. So that's the, the main change that really happens to you. Because what is dead to sin is like your records, your, uh, uh, um, you know, the place of birth is not really a hospital such and such. Your name on the, the records not really is. Because you're born out of me, you were uh, baptized in the death of my son, and you have a new name because you are in my book now. But he is perfectly aware that we are still the creature that we are. So I, uh, what I got from my readings, that right, we actually am enabled to choose now. We can be Israel of these righteousness. We are. We have that option in our uh, among our tools. We have that, um, and yet though. Uh, the, ch the choice, daily choice, which is a free choice, because he doesn't like robots. He wants us to come to him freely. And which is freaking amazing. So, sorry for freaking. It's amazing. Because it's like seeing like a sparkle divine in us. He wants us to treat it like someone extremely special. 
I'm gonna give some of my sparkle in you, and you're coming to me freely. I'm gonna give to you that power, which is also extremely scary because sometimes we fall in this side of the story. And uh, the downside is always that we kind of uh, drift away from him. So his blessing, his presence, his joy is gonna be an echo. And we need to move to the other side, of course. We all, we all knew that. Um, I can attract two main streams. Actually, I'm going to be more uh, uh, honest. This is more me. Uh, this is uh, me in the transition to be fully emerged in this joy. I want to move to another step, to a higher ground. And so, <coughs> and so I was, I'm basically called of duty. Are we to respond to the grace of God like soldiers do? A merely order executors and embracing the Stoics' choice? In appeal, Stoic is a kind of a philosophical movement and is about getting all emotions away. Do you stop out of duty without uh, expecting a reward? Mm -hmm. Keeping your emotion always in check, always calm, and uh, have just pride in executing a good deed. So think about Dr. Spock in Star Trek, okay? Super rational, you know, they always composed. On the other side is the world and sometimes us. We follow our heart and desire. Shall we chase your, our feelings, forgetting about the consequences? We do. Uh, embracing the agonistic uh, choice. And in appeal is the opposite. Do stuff only if it feels good. Only is going to give you something. Only if it's now. So those are the two poles. And of course, I think that God got another story. God seems to have another story for us with the joy in Christ at the center of it. It's that where I'm, my starting point is this. So we can recap what uh, Brian taught. And this is kind of my starting point uh, as a new thing for me, as a revelation. Um, I have uh, uh, many quotes for, uh, from uh, uh, people that uh, kind of made history. Uh, and I call them kind of uh, the higher ground seekers. Uh, one is Blaise Pascal. This guy is a really tall guy. He is, a, 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 first of all, a scientist, an inventor, and a writer, and a, a Christian apo a, a apologist. He is a big deal. And he kind of uh, explained way better than I can ever do in uh, this quote. Uh, I think it's worth to read together. All men seek happiness is without exception. Whatever different means they employ, they all tend to this end. The cause of some going to war can be seeking for happiness, or others avoiding it is going away, for, uh, going, going away from something that is not happiness. Uh, it's the same desire in both, attended in different views. The will never takes the least uh, step but to this object. This is the motive of every action uh, of every man, even those who hang themselves. So it's kind of a uh, dry maybe too much, but uh, it's very, we can really relate with that. I think it's a good way to uh, describe the human condition and this, this constant chasing this volatile concept of happiness. And for the next quotes, I'm going to ask somebody else to, uh, to uh, read, so the accent will not be in the way. Uh, this is another deal. This is the deal, actually, John Piper. And uh, this is from uh, the book, The Serenity of God. Uh, the desire to be happy is a proper motive for every good deed. It's actually switching here. It's like, not also is permitted, it's essential. We need to be in that place to know God, to know His will uh, through enjoyment. If we don't have that, we're missing vitamins, we're missing protein, we're missing the very good stuff that will build us up. Uh, and if you abandon the pursuit of your own joy, you cannot love man or please God. And there's also a scripture that picks up that, which is going to be shown later. God is the most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in Him. If you're like me, sometimes you don't feel satisfied in Him. It's like they said, what is the deal right here? Why this? Why that? Uh, God is qualified most, not merely by knowing, not being known, I'm sorry, not merely by being dutiful, obeyed, but by being enjoyed 
and the knowing and the obeying. Without the joying, the knowing, and the obeying, the knowing doesn't really, you know, it's not relevant, because we, you know the verse, even demons know the truth, right? And the obeying is also just frustrating and dry and uh, really not moving stuff in the right direction. So enjoyment is key. Uh, this is another big dude, Jonathan Edwards, one of the Puritans, glorified God so much as he, as he that testifies also is approbation. Approbation means approval, it means uh, recognition, means praise of it, and is the light in it. It is the uh, word. This is the highest ground because it comes directly from the, the, the word. So this is the highest ground. From whoever, uh, Rachel, would that you read maybe? Yeah, for whomever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Hebrews 11, 6. Delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desire of your heart. Psalm 16, 11. Do you see that? <coughs> Delight is uh, an activator of changing the desire of your heart. So this delight, this enjoyment of Jesus for us is key. That's why I felt often, I felt often in, 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 the, in the past sort of dry because I was just executing orders. And maybe is uh, in a very hypocritical way, like the Pharisees, just to polish and clean the external of the cup, but having inside the cup still the old desires. So I thought that was extremely good from the Lord, receiving this truth, what I was preparing for this. Uh, this is uh, more scriptures. For um, Tara, would you like to read for us? For where your treasure is, there <clears throat> your heart will be also, Matthew 6, 21. God loves the cheerful giver, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. So again, I try to, I like the, the key words here. Uh, for the next step, um, yeah. So, it seems to be a conclusion that we are supposed to want. Pleasure is the meter of my heart that measures uh, how valuable, how precious someone or something is to me. And I like this slogan. Pleasure is the measure of your treasure. We can come up with a song, I guess. Uh, this is another uh, big, big guy, another big fish. Uh, we all know uh, uh, C.S. Lewis. And this is kind of uh, 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 the weight of glory, which is the book. This quote is from is around the fifties or late forties. So this is uh, we are living the same problems. And the Jonathan Williams talking about the sixteen hundreds and so on and so on. Every single brother of the past and, and daughters and sister of the past dealt with the kind of a struggle. So uh, Dave, would you like to read sure. for us? If there lurks, like. I can barely read that, so maybe some of them. He's got glasses. If there, look, <clears throat> if there lurks in modern mist, in most modern minds, the notion that to desire our own good and earnestly uh, to hope for the enjoyment of it is a bad thing. I submit that this notion has crept in from Kant and the Stoics and is not part of the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. If indeed we consider the unblushing promise of reward and the staggering nature of the reward promised in the gospel. Please. It would, it would seem that our Lord finds our desires not too strong, but too weak. Ouch. Yeah. Um, we are half-hearted creatures fooling about with drink and sex and ambition with infinite joy when infinite joy is offered us, like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies in a slum because he cannot imagine what is meant by the offer of a holiday at the sea, at the sea we are far too easily pleased. Ouch, does it hurt to you? Mm. It hurts a little bit. So this is a spoiler alert then. <laughs> if something sinful gives you pleasure, it's not a pleasure problem, it's a treasure. Your pleasure mechanism is likely to function, function, functioning just fine. Is what you love that's out of whack. So there was a spoiler alert to me a little bit. 
And another thing, another rough side of pleasure is, is outing you. It's revealing that despite, despite what your mouth says and the image you try to project to others, something evil is precious to you. You remember the, the wedding uh, sepulchers? Is that uh, the right pronunciation of that? Sepulchers, you White, widened sepulchers, when uh, Jesus was uh, Jesus was talking to the Pharisees and compared them to uh, widened tombs. Right, mm -hmm. whitewashed tombs. Yeah, um, that's what uh, that's what sin is at the root, treasuring something evil. Uh, we have being set free to enjoy Jesus not only as our Lord and Savior, but also as our all-surpassing, soul-satisfying treasure. I, myself, uh, I'm, now that I'm, I'm more aware of that, I'm striving to go there. Because this is going to enable me to serve in the way I'm supposed to. So this is a, a goal for me. Unfortunately, I'm not there yet. But the, this, this study was revealing to me what I need to strive for. And... Uh, have uh, in my engine as a fuel this enjoyment, the, the good fuel. Um, this is more scripture to back up what are we just uh, talking about. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. More. Because a good man loves kindness and delights in the law of the Lord and the will of the Lord. I find myself being always in this other side. See God, I am uh, uh, executing what you want from me diligently. I am saying yes to your calls. And always smile just was upside of my mouth. Well, I want like all my pearls showing. Just yesterday, I visited my uh, dear friend, Mar Mancic, many of you will know it, and he had a, a guest, a dear friend of his. His name is Austin, he comes from Africa, Africa Nigeria, and he is one of the leader of, uh, uh, what's yeah, the name of the association? For Christ. Exactly. <laughs> and he was uh, showing us what is going on and what motivates them to do the unbelievable and also dangerous things they are doing there. And I want some of that. We, I need to move to this higher ground that uh, the God, God is talking about in His Word. And uh, uh, I will have uh, him as a guest. Maybe next time he's going to visit America. Uh, we decided to exchange contact and stuff. So I think you're going to enjoy this guy very much. And of course, we'll be uh, delight, delighted at uh, what he's doing there. And his story is just interesting. And he's just a great guy. And it's filled with the spirit, and you just can tell by his face. Um, that is kind of uh, the point where I'm going to uh, 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 experience the discipline of God. I know that it's going to come. I'm asking for it, so I cannot really back up. Uh, it's only God can make the depraved, the depraved heart desire God. But with man is impossible, but not with God, for all things are possible <coughs> with God. So he's going to deliver this for me. I just need to say yes. Uh, this is a second chance in life for all of us. And uh, I, ch I chose just one of us. Not a special tall dude. Not a uh, personality. Not a scholar. And he's still one. Is one. Yes. You got it. You got it. <laughs> and is, I think it's one of the best songwriters of the 20th century. But just just me. And he had a terrible accident. And he was, I think, in a coma for four days. And this is a song that came out right after that. And uh, please have the music in your head because the song is just amazing. Uh, I'm so glad that he let me try it again because my last time on earth, I lived a whole world of sin. I'm so glad that I know more than I knew then. I'm going to keep on trying till I reach the higher ground, highest ground. Do you know the song? You don't know the song? We don't What's it called? The high ground. The higher ground. Sing it. Oh, I don't. I, I don't have his voice. He's just too good. The too Chili good. Peppers did a version of it too. Yeah, unfortunately, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I like the Red Hot, but it, it wasn't. <laughs> okay, 
Uh, so uh, uh, any kind of uh, experience, a second, he was aware. He saved me and he brought me out of the coma for a specific purpose. Well, purpose, I'm sorry, to give me new eyes. Uh, and uh, with all this faults and all this uh, limitation, that it was what that was he's been doing on his life to reach this higher ground, and as you know, and the purpose that God gave to him, and probably I think it's uh, just using his talent to uh, describe his journey. And uh, most people are not aware that they always talk about faith. Uh, conversion is the creation of new desire, new delights, and new treasures. So we had the baptisms. Uh, Last week it was uh, just an amazing day. Uh, but uh, sometimes it doesn't happen that very day, this creation of new desires. Uh, because I think that uh, our uh, uh, stubbornness is so rooted that it is always in the back of our heads. We're always pointing our heels in the sand and drag every direction that God wasn't to take us. So I think that we need to strive every day. Ask, give me the desire of your heart. Give me the delight and the treasures that are promised and make my life be spring, springing by from that. Uh, the, sovereign, uh, the sovereign grace, uh, Ray, can you read for me? Yeah. The sovereign grace of God needs to transform my heart to do what a heart cannot make itself do. Namely, want what is ought to want, desiring God. The next line. The very nature of joy makes nonsense of our common distinction between having and wanting. I, uh, I I put this support right here because I never thought that. God, we always think about, this is what I have, but this is what I want. This is what I want, but I don't have this. We always kind of, uh, you know, unbalanced. And I think that the point that uh, our brother uh, uh, C.S. was making is that he's going to connect this wanting and having. And uh, kind of uh, link those two into our contentment in Christ. So I thought it was uh, worth to, to have in our uh, discussion. And by the way, uh, if you don't know anything about C.S. Lewis, I discovered C.S. Lewis basically through uh, Rachel. Uh, I'm planning to read uh, the school tapes letters with uh, Tyler once I can bribe him to say yes. <laughs> um, and uh, you, you need to, you need, we, we will be a worthwhile reading uh, um, this this uh, this brother of ours was giving some talents to express concepts that are very valuable, and uh, sometimes we like not to look at it. Uh, this is the kind of uh, the transition point for us. Often our fight of faith involves denying ourselves pleasure, but only deny ourselves a lesser, viler pleasure in order to have a much higher pleasure. And uh, the tricky part, so to speak, is sometimes those higher pleasures are uh, projected away in the future. Sometimes God will decide, you carry on with my grace, and, my, and uh, the, the higher ground, higher pleasure is going to be for you fully available once you're going to be back home with me. So I have a, a, a neighbor, uh, his name is George Jablonski. I love that dude, like, I don't know, he was my my. And he's got a, a Parkinson's. And you know that he's a uh, receding uh, 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 mm. disease. Parkinson's. And he's doing everything he can also to please the wife and uh, the rest of the family. He's trying to do uh, gymnastic, boxing, and uh, a kind of uh, uh, th therapy to keep this uh, uh, disease in check. Now, two years back, we have uh, 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 we had a uh, uh, a miracle moment in uh, Rob's garage. We were uh, praying together, and Rob has been thinking about healing Joe for quite a while. And it takes guts to just go there and propose to others, we're gonna heal today. So uh, Ron, which is another neighbor, walked away because he had stuff to do, and he said, I need to do this before Paulo goes. Well, it's gonna be just me and Joe, and I need a witness, right? So we moved there and, uh, and asked Joe, do you believe that Jesus can heal you? And immediately he said, oh yes, I do. And I was like, oh wow, I think something's gonna happen. And then I started, my rational mind gonna start thinking, yes, it is possible, 
done about this, about that. Rob shut me up, as he should, he should have, and he said, we're going to pray for him. Uh, John, Joe was ready. We put the hands on him. We prayed for him. And he said, do you believe you were healed? Yes. And, oh, he <laughs> there came no way. He walked in our street and he started running. A person that moves only with a cane at the speed of an ant stumbling, he was running in front of us. Oh my goodness. I was with my nails on the little window of the garage like this, just crying like a baby. Uh, Rob's jaw was on the floor. Um, and uh, we, he had this uh, miracles healing for, I think, two or three days. Then, unfortunately, he went back in with uh, doctors, medications, surgeries. And guess what? He started going down. He had this procedure in his toe, and he could use his toe, and his muscles were going atrophy. Is that the right word in English? And uh, not able to walk. He gained weight because he had to stay uh, on bed because he couldn't walk. And they took medication for it, blood pressure, and, 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 and in, in a pill. His kind of faith maybe uh, faded a little bit and put his faith into modern medicine. I work in modern medicine. Don't get me wrong. I I very glad that we have hospitals, uh, trained personnel, medications. I, I work in it, so I'm not saying anything else. But I think that uh, he, uh, when we do that, it was for me an example that when we do that, we lose the this, this sweet spot where we at. And it's clear it's also to him that it, that was an option. Just keep on walking in his healing. So, um, or when I think about our young people, I think about Chris, I think about Nathan, or other people like that, when you're looking for your girl, we, I was like that. The first opportunity I'm going to have, I'm going to jump in. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it doesn't matter this, it doesn't matter that. You go towards the eastern pleasure and stuff. And sometimes, later in the years, you want to stab yourself in the eye <laughs> because you didn't wait for the stuff that you have to do. Sometimes God will like you to be stay single. Paul, after his wife died, he decided not to remarry and said, if you, want to, if you want to know to remarry, it is completely fine. You can serve the God, full on, and stuff. Or the higher pleasure will be, you wait, boy. Keep your pants button. <laughs> she is going to have your heart, your mind, is going to be the perfect partner for you to walk in God. That's right. And, uh, uh, well, I am just uh, uh, shamely lucky. I am just lucky as can get. I had Rachel uh, coming in my path uh, even after I made those mistakes. So there's hope for everybody, I guess. Anyway, he asked us to deny ourselves the viler and lesser pleasures in order to give us more. We need to believe he's got more. I said, I'm going to remove this cancer for you, from you so I can give you some benefits. So we need to say yes, split me open, take the cancer away. Mm -hmm. But you know, we have, we need to have, uh, we need to ask for those kind of our guts, this kind of uh, our strength in us to say, always say yes to him. Uh, and this is kind of uh, the third part of my, uh, uh, let's call it uh, speech or whatever. Uh, that the fight of uh, faith is a fight for joy. Uh, satisfaction, happiness, joy, is the pursuit uh, of pleasure in God is not only permissible, it's essential. And you think, the first time that I read this, I was doing this, uh, this study, I think, oh, wow, finally, I can finally rely on my pursuit of joy. This bar finally is less tall. I'm going to have the screws onto holiness. And it wasn't true. Because the bar, out of the blue, uh, I'm free to pursue my, the, my fullest joy in God without guilt, beyond a sense of duty, glorifying Him through my desire and satisfaction in Him, because not only is morally impossible, it's also undesirable. And uh, um, 
Our desire really matter greatly because this is the true motivator of our decisions. So if wanna if you wanna if I want to see something truly happening in God, I need to move from here. I need my heart and new desires. So my action will spring from that kind of a source. I'm gonna just go back. Okay. And uh, uh, Thomas Watson, which is another big dude of another big brother of us of the past. Uh, now, go and get as much grace as you can, dig out as much salvation as you can. And the more happiness you have, the more I shall count myself glorified. Now it's time to go there and get as much as we can. Or that hole, that emptiness, emptiness is going to be filled with whatever junk we find along the street. And uh, some of this junk, it doesn't have, uh, not every drug or every poison has got a really a physical effect on us. Something is just there ready to strike like, I don't know, some kind of virus or uh, uh, some kind of disease that is just there latent. So not every junk that we choose is going to have an effect, so we're not going to be aware of that. But... The whole needs to feel in this way. Through the right fountain. Yes, the bar is being raised. The rough side of joy. When you think rough, you don't have necessarily think about something unpleasant. If you think about sandpaper, if the sandpaper wasn't rough, what would you do with that? Or a filer for your uh, knives or your nails. If it ain't rough, what are you going to do with that? You're going to thresh it away. So. Rough is the right condition of this tool to work. So even this side of this rough is because it needs to be. Uh, as soon as we realize that God receives the most glory from our satisfaction in Him, we also realize how far short we fall in so many areas of finding our satisfaction in Him. Because most people can find, like the Pharisees, they found that uh, the righteousness of their uh, 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 services, uh, rights, R-I-T-E-S, -E uh, a way to uh, uh, cover themselves with pride and righteousness and walk among others like we're superior. So we can fool ourselves like that, like they did. And uh, we may receive the same treatment that they received by Jesus. This was a very soft with them. It's just, this is, this is the mirror. Look at it. See what you see? This needs to die. His destiny is on the cross. Um, and we still have in it. Because uh, sin distorts and deceives and opposes and perverts my pursuit of uh, God by making other things more desirable than, uh, than Him. And this is the mighty monster we're up against. So we need to be aware of uh, the enemy of the entity of the enemy, the size of the enemy, we need to be aware that we have this kind of a giant to defeat. But God did it with David, a little boy with a little stone. So you say, you put your faith in him, and it's going to make it happen. And I hope that you want to see that happen in your life too. Uh, this is uh, Jeremiah, one of the prophets that uh, uh, was reflecting in this Age, we're talking about centuries, millennia ago. My people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and yewed yeah. out systems for themselves. Broken systems that can hold no water. Mm -hmm. Did I pronounce this uh, uh, mm -hmm. word right? Mm -hmm. This is Jeremiah 2.13. And uh, John Piper, kind of out of that, um, let's see, have this conclusion. The way to qualify a fountain, this fountain of living water, uh, like this, that like this, is the enjoy the water, praise the water, and keep coming back to the water, and point others to the water, and get strength for love from the water, and never, never, never prefer any drink in the world over this water. This is how we glorify God, the fountain of living water. 
So my conclusion uh, uh, for today is to delight and to bank on Christ. Bank on your faith that is on Christ. What was Rachel, that uh, story that we, that uh, uh, devotional that we uh, read together where faith was the currency? Oh, yeah, I don't remember. Well, it doesn't matter. Bank your faith on Christ. Believe that He is the highest ground, the highest uh, prize. Okay, forget the, the, the title. The best investment, the most desirable goal and destination. This is the main monster. This is Satan's main target to destroy. Mm -hmm. Therefore, our lives shall be a persevering fight for the joy of faith. I will encourage you to put down a list of those verses that I had time to put fully for everybody to read because you're going to see, you're going you're gonna to strengthen your faith in, uh, in His Word, reading in His Word. There's another way. More, uh, more uh, living fountain water. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. The next verse, Brian, would, I, would yeah. you like to read for us? Um. <clears throat> Jesus said, Truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternal life. Mark 10. So as we said before, uh, for some of us, the promises will be given only when we're going to be back home. But they're going to be as real as the ones that started having little sparks, little tastes, little uh, for, uh, um, uh, okay, I'm going to say that, for views. Uh, well, what I was trying to say is that uh, some of us will have the privilege to see uh, um, a reflection of those uh, 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 blessings in this life, but some, for some of us, or for the same person later in the day, will be the case of just walking with grace and waiting to be back home to see His promises unfold. And we're going to receive how many times? Hundredfold. So whatever you think is cool here on earth, it's going to be 100 times that, topped. And it's just a number to see that is going to be no comparison. We need to believe that. Dakota, uh, would you like to read for us? Sure. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. And then John 15. And our joy may be full. Um, I saw a um, bold red line between uh, the teachings of Brian and the first time that I had the privilege to share uh, the word with you. And now, and the message for me has been always the same. There are part of you, my son, that don't deserve a future. What you have as a husband, this part doesn't have, doesn't desire, that doesn't deserve a future. Be ready when I say to you to say yes to me and to walk with me to recovery. Something needs to happen. And it's, it's going to be radical. It's going to be the death of those sins. I need to be. I need to renew you. And on the other side of the Golgotha. You're going to see what kind of husband you need to be to Rachel. What kind of father you need to be for your children. What kind of friend you're going to be to you. It's on the other side. We know a lot. 
because we study the Bible, we talk about the words together. But some, uh, most of those promises are on the other side. And uh, we need to walk that road with Jesus to Calvary for us to have those sins hang there so we can have the resurrection of ourselves like day by day. We need to say yes, walk, hang, and discover. And uh, I am uh, uh, overwhelmed by this uh, uh, um, uh, realization from this uh, truth, and I'm willing to say yes. And uh, it's already hurting, but it's, uh, I know it's a good hurting. Yeah. It's like when you grow your teeth. We don't, we, it's so painful that our brain will, will remove that memory. They say that if we have the kind of pain that kids have, we will need morphine to deal with that. <laughs> Nevertheless, do we need our teeth? <laughs> Heck yeah. Ask Joe, my neighbor doesn't have it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> we do need those pearls. It's vital. It's essential. Right? But they do hurt like crazy when they're coming out of our gums. It's a kind of bloody uh, matter. Um, this is uh, some of the uh, encouraging uh, living water that I found in his word, in his book. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. And when I say refuge, I, will, I, I kind of uh, have this conversation with the kids of Bots uh, this year. And... Uh, we agreed that sometimes we need that kind of refuge. The mighty monster, the mighty lion is against us. And we can see some of that in our peers, or parents sometimes, or whatever is the circumstances. And you know to save your heart, sometimes you need to take refuge because you're not tall enough to go against some of the sins that we face every day. So sometimes it's just shelter safe place. We need just to go there just because we don't have it yet. So, underground with him. Uh, restore, restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. You see that? So we may lose it. It's normal. He knows it. So the prayer, the prayer of the psalmist is, give it that back to me. Give that back to me. Please, give that back to me. I need the good fuel. So my engine can run the way it's supposed to. Uh, satisfy us in the morning with uh, your uh, steadfast love, that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Amen. We know that this rejoice and be glad is not from the world. I mean, it's not the kind of, the kind of joy that the world will give it to us would never give Paul the strength and the faith to go through what he went through. All of his uh, apostolic life. So we're talking about something more precious than what we think uh, be glad is. This is another uh, um, quote for a person that we know, if we read it, uh, Heaven, the book that uh, Brian uh, 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 encouraged us to read, which is a very good one. Uh, seeking happiness without God is uh, like seeking water without wetness or sun without light. I just love it. It's almost like a, a righteous joke. And we do it. We do it. So if you think, oh, we would never do that. It was the stupid person with every, every us. Um, it's a good fight, says God through Paul in the Bible. And I gave myself some bullet points because sometimes I forget. It's a good fight. Because the enemy of our joy is evil. So if we're fighting on the other side, we're not with the evil one. We are with the righteous one. Fighting against unbelief. Uh, be, uh, it's a good fight because God fights for us and in us. We, we fight our own ego, which is in the way all the time. It's a good fight because we can trust God with our own burdens. Uh, burden. Did I pronounce that right? Uh, Fight for the freedom from those burdens. I cannot wait for. I already experienced it in my life, but it feels so good to throw those burdens away when you find the strength in them to do it. It's like when I, I remember one of the messages of Ryan uh, when you go to the to the narrow door, 
that leads to Jesus, and you have like the four wheeler that you're, uh, uh, you're towing with you, and guess what? The, the, four, the fifth wheeler ain't gonna fit. Mm. So you need to reload it, and then you fit. Um, it's a good fight because it's a fight not for our self exaltation uh, at our own expenses or someone else's expenses. I have uh, uh, narcissist, narcissistic tendencies, so sometimes I will uh, find, uh, look for my self exaltation even if it's someone else's expenses. Actually, in my brain, if it's someone else's expenses, is it more convenient? So if you have that kind of same nature in you, you may find those words encouraging. Uh, fight for the redemption of Adam in humility. This is our old self. We are all there. How Adam can be so foolish to not say, to not keep her uh, 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 help given from God from doing what she did and saying yes to what she did or saying nothing. How can be so stupid? We do that all the time. If I was back then, I would have done probably the same thing. So I'm not judging Adam. My Adam needs to die. He just needs it. Uh, it's a good fight because God is greatly glorified and exalted. So fight against all alien joy. It's a good fight because everybody is going to, uh, to, going to benefit from that. So we're going to fight for the greater good. So if you say yes to God... You're gonna spread good vibes. So every it, it, you know, it's like when you make mistakes and you say, "It's my life. I do what I want." The mistakes of your life is like spreading ripples. It will affect everybody. My mistakes will affect Rachel, my kids, my friends. So it's not just me. You have a responsibility in those, and you're gonna fight for the great good. So it's extremely encouraging to me. If I say yes to him, it means he's gonna spread his good vibes through me. Now that's pretty encouraging. Okay. That's pretty cool. Uh, so there will be uh, uh, the fruit of my devotional time with God. And uh, I just want to leave you with those two verses. And uh, uh, if you have your Bibles, uh, we can read it together. And uh, my final thing is this. That the fight itself is a gift. So just the privilege to fight this kind of fight is a privilege, it's a given, it's an honor. And uh, uh, do you have uh, sexual ease of 2 Timothy for 7 and 1 Corinthians? I'll get the 1 Corinthians okay. passage. I got 2 Timothy. Okay. I think this, uh, those are uh, relevant to the, to the message. Can we read 2 uh, Timothy? Sure, please. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. In in Second Corinthians ten. First. Uh, first Corinthians, sorry, fifteen ten. Uh, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, mm -hmm. and His grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them. Uh, though, sorry, it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Mm -hmm. So I want to thank God that I, I can uh, reach this higher ground where my life will matter to myself and uh, everybody else that is to me. This is extremely exciting. And that needs to be greater than any fear, equal lies Amen. they put inside of me. And uh, I am uh, excited to have started this kind of a change in my life. And... Uh, I encourage myself to do it every day, even though life is crazy. We know it. Uh, um, you know, raising a family, uh, being in contact and in relationship with uh, other people, uh, being in relationship with God, and uh, the old thing and our desire pulling away, it's a constant struggle and drains our energy, and life is crazy. Life is crazy. But uh, we need to find that sweet spot when we shut everything out and said I need the living water or I'm going to fade away with this and uh, there is that uh, 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 probability but just remember that we have been given now that we are pickles uh, permeated with uh, salt and vinegar we are that 
and what is the past does no longer uh, apply to us because we can now back to the cucumber. Amen. So now, Pickles friend, we have the honor to have uh, this uh, fight for joy and to remember that you need, that we need uh, this kind of fuel, the, 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 the being satisfied with what he has for us, being like joyful of, uh, because of his, uh, uh, the way he loves us and have that kind of motivator for your, uh, for your action. Or you're going to probably experience some dryness, some uh, uh, unbelief, some uh, laziness, spiritual laziness, if you, if you have uh, your ducks in a row. Mm -hmm. I noticed that as, so many times, even the chronological order of the words makes sense. It will never switch one word, you know? The grammatical order sometimes really matter, and we have to have those mm -hmm. in, in place. And the motivator, it needs to be the joy of Christ. And that's what I, the God gave, him, gave me for us today. So I hope you were, uh, find those uh, words encouraging and uh, we'll build you up. <laughs>